Hey guys, this is Jeff Tackett with Volvo Trucks. I get the opportunity to go RVing with Andrew Steele. What is going on everybody? It's a beautiful day in Sturgis, South Dakota. And right now we're gonna take this 38 foot Renegade for a test drive. Huge thanks to the RV Glass Guru for sponsoring today's video. RV Glass Guru specializes in large one-piece windshield replacement. They have a team of installers that service the entire state of Arizona, as well as a nationwide network. They put a new windshield in my Tiffin over a year ago, and I couldn't be more happy with the service I received. The RV Glass Guru offers discounts to veterans and first responders. Thank you to all of you that have served our country. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sitting here with Jeff, the Volvo rep, and we're behind the wheel of a 38-foot Renegade. I like how when the air, I can tell when that air came on, uh, my seat's going up. This is pretty cool. exhilarating. Huh? I, I don't have air ride in my Class A, so this is a very rare opportunity to take this 38-foot Renegade for a test drive, and we're going to see how it drives here. Andrew, a lot of people that get into the Super Cs, make the comment that they drive like a large SUV. So the handling is a lot uh, easier because it's more than what they're used to. When you get into operating normal RVs, you're sitting so far out ahead of the axle that it takes a while to really get your beans of how far to turn, how far to let it go out. But with, it, with the axles being out ahead of you, like a normal SUV or a pickup truck, it's a lot more common knowledge. That makes sense, yeah. With the spring suspension on the front, you have a lot more stability. So when you're coming down into a curve, say on a coming down a hill and you get into a curve, a lot of times with those air ride fronts on those RVs, you feel like you're just going to lose it over into the ditch line. These hold up a lot better on the uh, on a down curve or, or when you're maneuvering it too. This is a Volvo D13, 500 horsepower, 1850. Volvo is your largest diesel engine manufacturer in the world. They build more diesel engines over 9 liter than anybody in the world. And what chassis is this on? This is on the new VNR platform. It's the uh, Volvo North America Regional platform. And it's got a 113.5 inch bumper to back cab, which is about 11 inches shorter than your competing product. Uh, so it gives you a lot more space for the for the RV package or your living area, which a lot of people really count as, you know, priceless. I have to say, this is a totally different feel from my Class A. It, it's a very wide windshield. There's no pillar. It's not as tall, but still, you have a really nice view out of this big windshield. And I like the placement of the mirrors too. You've got your mirrors up there and then more mirrors here, so you can really see everything. And you'll notice the bears don't vibrate. A lot of uh, class eight trucks or even in the, in the RVs, if you got mirrors on the hood or the side mirrors, they sit, they want to shake and you can't see anything. These mirrors, they don't vibrate and you've got very, really good visibility out of them. Yeah, that definitely, yeah. Solid mirrors and heated windshield that goes across the oh, bottom. Yep. Have any idea why they put that across the bottom, Andrew? No, why is that? You got, uh, where does your ice always build up when you're into like a snowstorm? They that, always build up on your windshield wipers. That makes so they sense. they bring it across the bottom so that they will keep your windshield wipers defrosted and not get a lot of heat build up or ice build up on your windshield wipers. What year is this? Uh, is this a 2021 or what year is this? This one's actually a 2020 model that we're driving in, but this is, they haven't changed anything as far as the interiors from the 20s to the 21s. And some of the um, upgraded features that you'll have in some of the models, we put an infotainment center here, which is a touchscreen navigation that you can get in these also. Uh, but everything else is pretty much pretty much the same. Good deal. With your engine in the front, you don't have the um, the heat problems that you have with a rear engine design because when you have a rear engine design. You can never get an, the ample enough cooling capacity needed to keep those diesels running cool enough, especially with all of your new EPA regulations and all your emissions. All you, all they've done is add tremendous heat 
to the engine compartment. Now they're even running into greater problems when you talk about um, seals and hoses and wear and tear on extreme heat when you got rear engine mounted uh, product they can't keep it cool enough. With our product being mounted in the front not only do you have the safety of the engine being in front of you and then all of that you have the cooling capacity because you have direct airflow coming straight into the to the radiator. Nice. Another thing with horsepower you calculate about a 10% loss on horsepower on a front engine mount where you have about a 40% loss on a rear uh, mounted engine from, from to the ground. So say you've got a 500 horsepower uh, engine in a front engine, mount, in front engine mount, you'll have about 450 horsepower to the ground. When you have it in the in, when you have it in a rear engine mount, you lose about 40% of that. So it's a much greater loss of horsepower to the ground. So you calculate more torque and more horsepower. Very interesting. You learn something new every day. It's definitely a super. I mean. You feel a little bit of the of the road, but uh, you know, even in my Spartan chassis, Tiff and Phaeton, I know I feel a lot of the little jolts and stuff. Do you feel all those jolts in the steering wheel, or you can feel the road, but it's not uh, it's not uncomfortable. The thing about being able to feel the road surface, I want to know what's happening. If there's something in the engine that that uh, happens, something in the steering. I'm able to feel it, I'm able to hear it. It's still quiet, it's the same decibel level as a Lexus car um, in the Volvo VNR. So you still have that ability to, to, to communicate with the passenger without screaming at them. When you get into some of the other Class A product, it's so loud and the decibel level is so high from just the engine, um, you can't talk to one another, you're screaming and you can't hear anything. Within a Volvo product, it's a very, the decibel level is so low that you can still communicate. But yeah. when you have an engine, another thing, when you have an engine in the rear, you never know what's going to happen with that engine unless you have a red light on the dash. I don't want to depend on that red light in the dash to tell me if something happens to my motor. If I can hear something that changes, I can catch it a lot faster than what I can depend on a red light in my dash. Absolutely. More of a natural application of operating a vehicle. You think of your car, your pickup truck, your SUVs, it's more of a natural application and handling of a vehicle of this size. It, it's not uncomfortable. I can, again, it's like it's like driving your pickup truck down the road. I can take a, a Class 8 Volvo with about twice the wheelbase of my pickup truck and turn it inside of what my pickup truck will turn. That's what the, the turning radius on these is so incredible. It's 50 degree wheel cut on a Class A product. This is a 38 foot coach uh, as opposed to a lot of the 45 foot coaches they make. Is this going to have a much tighter turning radius because of the shorter, is it a shorter wheelbase than the 45 footers? This one's going to be a much shorter wheelbase because not only because it's a shorter body, but it's a single axle compared to a tandem axle. Yeah. So on a tandem axle application, your, your pivot point is the center of the tires, or what we call the center of the trunnion in the Class 8 world. So with a single axle, you're actually turning at the center of the tire, and the wheelbase is much shorter. So your wheel your, your wheel to wheel cut is gonna be much shorter in a 38 foot compared to a 45 foot. With the overhead bunk, See, Renegade has a couple products. They have an open cab, a walk-in cab, and then they also have an overhead bunk. With the overhead bunk, they actually leave the air right cab part of the suspension too, so you have a boot in between the body and the cab. So not only do you have the air right seat, the air right suspension in the back, but you also have an air right cab that helps take out some of that road vibration. Nice. And it's a beautiful day up here in Sturgis, ladies and gentlemen. If you, uh, have an opportunity to come up here uh, it is definitely worth it they've got a bunch of renegades on display uh, Eldorado trailer sales they've got the renegade rep out they've got a, the Volvo rep uh, our buddy Jeff out here the Volvo rep right. is out here to answer all your questions and uh, just a just a great team uh, I'm really impressed with all the folks from Eldorado trailer sales and Andrew I've been working with Eldorado for about the last 15 years and I can tell you there's nobody 
absolutely nobody that has a better customer service than El Dorado Trailer Sales. Call down and talk to Charlie and talk to Abby. They'd be happy to treat you like family. If you have something in the middle, I didn't buy my my Renegade from uh, El Dorado, and I call him on Saturdays and Sunday nights, and he's always eager to help and, and get us out of the uh, situation that we might be in. They're just incredible people. My my Class A diesel pusher has uh, just a, a, a two-level auxiliary brake. You want to tell us a little bit about the braking system on this coach? Yeah, Andrew, we're coming to a stop up here on the exit. I'm going to bring it to a complete stop with just the engine brake. This has got a three-stage engine brake with the Volvo D13 and the Volvo I-Shift because we speak the commu same communication manufactured by the same company. I've got three stages plus a boost brake so I'm in the third stage now, coming off of the exit, and still plenty of coming on a downhill even, and it's bringing us to a stop. But with the manufacturer, with Volvo manufacturing both the engine and the transmission, we speak the same language. It's not a Cummins talking to an Eaton or a um, Allison. If I can bring it down to third stage, and I push a boost brake, it actually takes it down to the lowest gear possible. I've not hit my brake yet, it rolls to a complete stop. Yeah. There's a bunch of bikers here, so we better be careful. But uh, I'm impressed at how, how quickly you were able to stop this. So so how many levels total? It's a, a triple level? or It's got three levels plus a, what they call a boost brake. When you hit that boost brake, it shifts your transmission down to the lowest gear possible, which gives you the highest RPMs, gives you the largest braking capacity. Volvo already has the largest braking capacity of engine, any engine brake in the in the class A world. Nice. Well guys, we're about to pull back into the El Dorado trailer sales lot here. They're at the, it's uh, right by Black Hills Harley Davidson in Rapid City, South Dakota. So they're going to be out here all week. If you want to come, I highly recommend checking out all these cool renegades they have. Jeff is going to be on site. He's the Volvo rep as well as the Renegade rep. Harley will be on site as well. So these folks are here to answer your questions. Definitely a great opportunity to come out here and meet them, learn more about Renegades, learn more about Volvo. I highly recommend stopping by if you get the chance. I greatly appreciate all of you liking these videos and subscribing to my channel. I hope you're all having a great day. Thanks again. Go check out his YouTube page. Come on, go RVing with Andrew Steele.